titties are out. But did I? I think I just broke my bra. <laughs> and I've the sun has just come out. Now this is happening. It's helpful. It's been cloudy all day. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do the mid-year freakout tag and I will also be including some of my stats so far for 2020. I decided I wanted to do the mid-year tag past the mid-year point. July the 1st is the mid-year point. That is slap bang in the middle of the year and I wanted to make sure that every book that I read up to that point could be included because I've read some absolute books in June and I didn't want to like do the tag earlier and then have those books miss out, so that's why we're doing it now. But before we start, just a couple of things about the statistics because I am so proud of myself. <laughs> so I set myself a target back in January of reading 60 books in the whole year because last year I was reading an average of five books a month. So I then set that as a challenge for myself to make sure that I was reading at least five books every month. I would then hit 60 and surpass by quite a large margin my 20 books that I read last year. I've already read 51 books, which means that I am a month, maybe, if that, away from hitting that target with another five months to go. That's intense, but also very exciting. It means that I am 19 books ahead of schedule, which is, again, very exciting. I had a look to see, was I reading Top Trump's books? Was I doing loads of readathons? Because I also set myself the target of taking part in more readathons. And so far I have done at least one a month, although there were a couple of months where I decided to do like four readathons in a month. She's not sure. But anyway, I worked out that of the 51 books, three books were just self-published books that I wanted to help promote. 14 books were for readathons unrelated to Top Trump's cards. 11 books were for Top Trump's cards. So I don't know what's happened there. I don't know if I just, I pick them up. I know they're gonna be in my TBR and then I just don't prioritize them. And then the rest were just books that I either picked up or they were the sequels to books that had been in my Top Trump's cards or whatever it was. I'm less likely to read a book if I pick it out per month so maybe I need to either create a new TBR game that I am going to commit to or I make sure that I commit to those four cards before everything else because otherwise what is the point? It means that I have read over 15,000 pages this year which is just I, it's kind of split between audiobooks and paperbacks. I'm far more inclined to listen to audiobooks and paperbacks or read alongside a paperback with an audiobook, if that makes sense. I've only read two ebooks. So let's let's start with the media freakout tag questions. I will put the questions below. So many videos that I've seen just didn't have them typed up and I just think if anyone's gonna then take this tag on, which is unlikely because now that it's kind of like the first week of July, everyone has either already done it or has the questions or whatever, but just in case I will put the questions below. So the first question is your best book from 2020 and mine will be Queenie. I had this as a hardback, I also listened to the audiobook as I was reading and it just blew me away. Its description on the back is essentially that it's like Bridget Jones set in Brixton but it is so much better than that because it's not just a Pride and Prejudice retelling for the modern woman. It looks at microaggressions, it looks at mental health, it looks at how we view women in society in general, it looks at how we view sex in general, it looks at relationships. It's a really really powerfully written book. I I've recommended it to so many people since I read it because any opportunity for me to say read this book this has been the book that I've been like you just need to fucking read it like it's so good I think it will probably even in December be my favorite book of the year I did think it was going to be Nevernight because Nevernight was just a fantastic read but I felt like I took more away from this and I'm far more likely to recommend this to everyone I don't think there's a single person on the planet who shouldn't read this everyone should read this everyone should read this so the next one is the best sequel of 2020 and I'm master trash now. So I really enjoyed the sequel. I thought it was much, much better than the first. I think because I knew that you were gonna fall in love with the main characters of this one, I was more skeptical of the first book and therefore it made this one seem better. 
but of all the sequels that I've read this year, and there are only two or three, this was my favourite. I was laughing out loud at some points, some points were really poignant, it had a great representation of kind of like the PTSD and trauma, they were grey morality characters, they weren't perfect, they, it was fun, it was fantasy driven, it wasn't highly political. A few of the fantasies I've read this year have been and it just hasn't been my thing, it was just, yeah, it was just fun and whimsical and I really enjoyed it. So number three is your newest release that you haven't read yet and for me it is Court of Miracles. I don't know if you can see that because that is literally right in the sunshine. So that's anyway. This is a Les Mis retelling. I think it's a fantasy adaptation. Is it a fantasy? I can't remember. It might be. Yeah, so it's just a Les Mis retelling that I'm really excited about reading. So many people have been talking about it. I can't believe my brain has just gone completely blank and I don't remember anything about it, but I am excited to read it nonetheless. <laughs> Number four is your most anticipated read for the rest of the year. And for me, that is Ruin Song by Julia Ember. And I can tell you in five words or less, sapphic rivals two lovers, bitch. Now to get a bit negative, I try not to be, but sometimes it just has to happen. Your most disappointing read of the year so far. Now I DNF'd Wicked Saints. I got about 200 pages in and was so disappointed with that, but more disappointing than that was The Fork, The Witch and The Worm. This is the Christopher Paolini Aragon spin-off. It's Aragon after everything that's happened in the four book series. Collection of short stories, only it isn't, and it... It was pants. I really, really didn't like it. And even if the stories themselves weren't boring and tropey and just... I know that he's tropey, but this seemed even more so. Can we look? Can we discuss? Can we talk about that type font? What is going on there? You've got about an inch either side for... And then massive... What is going on? Really, really disappointing. The characters seem to just be all either super depressed or willfully ignorant of the lessons they were supposed to learn in the series. It just felt... And that's why it was more disappointing than with Wicked Saints, because at least with Wicked Saints I wasn't emotionally attached to the characters and the narrative beforehand. But to ha go back to something you love and then it be this... is heartbreaking. So I DNF'd it. I'm unhauling it. It was crap. Biggest surprise of the year for me was Power by Naomi Alderman. Now I knew this was going to be a outspokenly feminist, powerful, dystopic novel. I had no idea how many emotions it was going to make me feel, the roller coaster of it, the lessons that were going to be learned. Like it was just incredible. And consider it's not a it's not a big book. Like there was so much in here really diverse characters, uh, like loads of inclusivity, loads of diversity, loads of representation, powerful messages about power, obviously, and how we view society and how we treat women in society and what would happen if women did finally have the upper hand and it's not pretty. <laughs> like, And that for me was what was wholly feminist about this was it wasn't, oh women are better than men. I mean we are. But it was the fact that actually if we had those opportunities how cruel and realistic it felt. It was it was powerful and I thought it was very cleverly structured with the kind of this all happening before an event that you know is going to happen but you don't know what the event is and then it's being narrated by someone who is after the event. It was very very clever. If you've not read it, this and Queenie. If you take nothing else away from this video, this and Queenie. So the next question was your favourite new author of the year. Now <sighs> I wouldn't say there is specifically like a debut author that I'm desperately in love with as of yet and I wouldn't say that I have like a new author that is like a new favourite but if I were to have one I think it would only be fair to give it to Sarah J Maas because I've read more of her books this year than I've read anyone else's which is three. I've read three of her books. <laughs> I've got a real commitment issue this year. I only read the first two of this series. I read the first two of Heartstopper. I read the first two of To All The Boys I Love Before. I haven't finished the trilogy yet, but Sarah J Maas is the one that I've come closest to, so. Some guy tooting outside. Newest fictional crush would obviously be Rhysand. He gives her a choice and he's charming and he's sexy. But I've also been binge watching Criminal Minds. I've been giving myself nightmares by watching it at night whilst I'm the only person in the house, but I'm in love with Aaron Hotchner. I'm in love with him. 
I'm in love with everything about him. He's a great dad, he was a great husband, I don't know what Hayley was thinking. I love him. If only I could find a real person to get this excited about. Anyway. Newest favourite fictional character would have to be Eris from Laura Olympus. I read this comic series uh, years ago, but I hadn't finished. I then reread it last month and was really excited to find that it was on Goodreads and therefore I could count it as a read. And if you've spent more than three hours reading something and there's like 110 pages, that definitely counts. So I've added that to my reading list. Don't at me. But Eros is witty and funny and just generally great. And I also love Tori from Heartstopper. She is just, in all the scenes that she's in, I think she has maybe three lines of dialogue in the two books that I read, but still the lines she does get are the best. She's just hilarious. I love her. The next one is a book that made you cry. The most recent book that made me cry is Pick Heart Boy by Mallory Blackman. This is about a little boy who needs a heart transplant and they transplant his heart with a pig heart and he has to deal with a kind of media backlash and his friends turning on him and thinking that he's a monster. And it is really, really sad. And I'm not gonna give away the ending, but the ending is sad. And the middle bit is sad. And the beginning is quite sad too, but the middle bit had me bawling my eyes out. So really, really beautifully written. Mallory Blackman is a queen. Pick Up Boy is amazing. For a book that made you happy, I'm going to do the audiobook Over the Top by Jonathan Van Ness. Yes, there are some sad and poignant moments in it, but overall it is an empowering story. He is wonderful. He obviously narrates it himself and it's just, you walk away being like, yeah, like I want to be a good person. <laughs> So that's a happy feeling, I like that. The most beautiful book that I've read so far this year is probably The Pearl and the Ice. Beautiful on the inside and out. Although it is middle grade, it is very literary in the style that it's written. Very whimsical, they go to the North Pole or something like that, they go to the Arctic. So it's very icy and it has mermaids in it, but they're beautifully described sirens. And obviously the front cover is just really, really pretty. Purples and pinks and just, oh, it's just great. It's just great, I really enjoyed this. Okay, number 13 are books that you need to finish before the end of the year. Now, I've only committed to finishing five series this year that I really desperately want to finish. So the next books in those series that I want to finish are God's Grave by Jane Kristoff and Always and Forever by Jenny Han. Those are the two series that I own that I'm committing to and then there are several others, but I don't wanna do that in this video because the list is too long. I've got a full owned TBR that I need to get through. I really want to read every single book that I've already bought this year, which means that November, October and December are probably gonna just be me cramming as many of those books in as possible so that I don't disappoint myself. Because if I don't, I think I'm just gonna have to put myself on a buying ban next year because I cannot be trusted. I just can't be trusted. And then a favorite booktuber slash bookish person in the community. In December, was it December or was it January? I think it was December, when the, YouTube Rewind thing came out. I decided I was going to do a bookish booktube rewind. It was one of the first videos I posted and it was all of my favorites of the year in that video. And I think rather than talk about it now, I am just going to make another one this year. So just know that if I've subscribed to you, you might be in it. Cause I just think it was just really fun and it was really lovely to see people's response to being chosen as well, because I think there are so many fantastic booktubers out there and so many smaller booktubers that don't realize that actually they're having a big impact on people's like viewing enjoyment. So keep your eye out for that one anyway. The sun has come out again. This is gonna annoy me so much. And also now one side of my face is really hot. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If yeah, you know how like some YouTubers are really clever and they think of what question they're going to ask at the end of a video before the video ends? Pros. Pros those people. I don't know. I don't know. Make sure you're liked and subscribed. Have a nice day.